Hello everybody and welcome to the second round World Cup match between Kabusta and Arza Wayne. Kabusta, well, Human Mirror. Kabusta won the toss in, in the red and blue humans and chose to receive. Uh, Arza Wayne in the green and white humans. Um, they've both got identical teams. 12 players, 3 rerolls, half hole. Kabusta with 2 fame. Kabusta qualified for the OCC. He's from the Czech Republic and has a win rate of 55% in Champs Ladder. Um, Arzawain qualified from the Invitational Cup. Um, he did that on the PS4 side of it. Um, he does have a win rate of 70 He's Spanish and has a win rate of 76% in Champs Ladder. Though, it must be said, that win rate is on PS4. <laughs> and... I'm not disrespecting the console community at all. I'm just pointing out that that's what platform he plays on. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Kabusta won the toss and chose to receive. Um, I didn't like Kabusta's block catcher in game one, but I like it a lot in game two when he's blocked guard. It does give him only three guard to... Uh, to the four guard of ours, I, I would have, I would have actually maxed guard. I would have had more guard than either of these. <laughs> Loads of people block their ogre, which is, you know, it's fine getting blocked on your ogre. But I would have literally had guard on the ogre, guard on the catcher, and no mighty blow. Uh, you know, may not have been a good idea. Turn one, dodge into a Kaz. Fantastic. Not saying my, my build would have been better or anything. But I would have certainly got a hell of a lot of guard. <laughs> yeah. Kind of attrition blitz, there's no real positional advantage from that blitz, just trying to hurt somebody. I guess he's based him up a little bit to make him hopefully fail another dodge and die. <laughs> Was nice though hitting the catcher, I guess. But he did expose a guard blitzer, which maybe, maybe he could have done it in such a way as to not expose a guard blitzer. Like, you know, if you if you can, of course, not expose guards to do things, it's better, because dice happen. So yeah, Arzwain just mirroring Kapusta's formation there makes makes sense. There's no need for, you know, there's no need for the, uh, for Kapusta to advance too quickly, and there's no need for Arzawain to go crazy trying to stop him. Kind of like the pushing into more blocks there, but the, the problem is it does expose his mighty blow tackle. Um, you know, if, if he wants to go for him, he can go for him, getting a big rook. He hasn't got the the cage directly behind the other so. Wow, that was interesting, wasn't it? This was just a block. He could have put a player in there and then and then gone for the uphill if he wanted. I mean, maybe he thought about it. But wow, the cars. Better the cars that guy. That was nice actually getting the chaining the hit under the the mighty blow, wasn't it? So yeah, got got the Kaz and the Apo has been used on turn three. Goes for a one on the mighty blow guy. 
we're giving up another mighty bow. So I don't like this so much. I don't like this guarding, guarding and guarding and guard there. Surely he should have um, blitzed the guard and then blocked him. And then, oh no, no, he came in as well. Still, hmm, I'd rather blitz the, uh, blitz the guard and then, then block him and then leave him in contact with being better. Slightly, I think. It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell when you're watching the replays what was possible. And you know, again, I'm not criticising anybody. I made a bunch of mistakes in my game. Uh, I don't think I really made any in the first game, but I did definitely some less than optimal moves in my second game, so. You know. I'm not acting like I would do everything perfectly. Or even that what I'm or even that what I would have done was right. I mean I still don't know that it was right to stall in my game or not. If I'd stalled and been uh, not scored I would have said, Oh, would it have been right to score? You know you can you can think about it forever, can't you? So he was already three, four, five, six, so I would have maybe just hmm, blocked the ogre for it. He doesn't block the ogre. Interesting. It's a KO though, and another guard player. The down two huge two guard here is pretty huge on his offense. Actually quite like that because it's pretty hard for him to um to get a 2D here, might have not that hard. Could use guard and a blitz, so. But it doesn't look like he's good. Maybe that was Arza Wayne's plan, maybe that's why he did that. It's, it's an interesting uh, formation. Trying to surround the ogre without hitting him. But it does mean he gets to splat somebody. I think I would have followed there, personally. Just to get nearer, you know, nearer the center and nearer the ball. But then we would have exposed a chain. Garden there, maybe maybe something bad could have happened. So there is a one man advantage for us at this point. But he's got two guard advantage. Three guard advantage, actually, because he had more guard anyway, didn't he? Because of the block on the catcher. So at the moment, it's one guard. One guard versus four. Which, you know... And this is, this is the thing about luck, isn't it? You know, there's no real... In the long run... The better player will make more will make more cards with identical teams than the worst player and all this kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, you know, in these games, the cards are, are, are almost all, all luck. And um, that's just basically luck that he's up two players. And, well, up one player, but up two guard. Now, obviously, it was his choice to have block on the block guard catcher could have had an extra guard he just chose not to have an extra guard but this is the kind of thing with blood ball snowballing isn't it is that it lets it lets kind of Arzawain look like he's playing better by having the advantage he could have just 2d the ball here couldn't he one two three four five six seven gfi chose chooses not to which is fair enough i really don't like hitting the ball without tackle you know if i can help it um, maybe he was going to chain the uh, 
chain the catcher onto the sideline there. He couldn't have surfed him, but he could have maybe pinned him on the sideline. Um, yeah, so you know, like, so it's able to look like he's playing better just because he's got more guard and an extra player and he's making all these stuns. So it's it's really hard to judge, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not harshly criticising or judging anybody in these, you know, just saying what I see. I'm just some guy on the internet. Doesn't really matter, does it? Quite like that going for that block, although it gives up a hit on the ogre next turn. I didn't like this at all. Okay, he's just re-rolling, he doesn't want a double skull. But, you know, I think if this player had gone... Um, if that lineman had gone here... And I think it's a lot better. A lot. Like, that makes his defence so much better. Because then he's got a screen there with the ogre. And he's got a screen here with this guy. And, yeah, I think there, or even there, would have been way better. Or here. Anywhere but where he went, basically. Because this just, you know, did nothing unless he rolls a 1 in 36. So, while there's an argument for safe moves first and what have you. Um, so it looks like... Kabusto's just gone for the score here. Dodge through exactly where that guy would have been. So an option opened up to him because of that human line in there. I don't know if he thought he was strength three. You know, thought he needed the assist, maybe. Mistakes can be made in the heat of battle. So maybe that was just an outright mistake by Azawain there. Maybe. Yeah, because I think he was pretty close to just stopping the score. I don't think he would, he would be that happy about having a two-turn chance. I think he would have rather stopped the score. <laughs> but, you know, once it's got there, once, it goes, once it's got to that stage. So the, the two guard are back now. One thanks to the apple and one thanks to KO recovery. I don't really like defending narrowly against a two-turn, especially from humans who are so fast. But it looks like he is going to, and he is quite far back, which means he can spin around a bit. It's it's not so bad to defend in the centre against the two turn if you are fast players yourself. And he does have two movement eight. He could run around anywhere, get around the back. So Arzawain's got a chance for the the two one. Well, yeah, the kind of two one grind, isn't it? Rain is pretty unlucky. Humans being crappy. Agility 3, now the like a Kemri team. I don't really like this splitting when he's in the middle and able to go to either side, letting him go to both sides. I'm not sure it's as good as just kind of brute forcing down one side. I think that would have been the play, in my opinion. <laughs> he could have had like a really big cage here or people out in front or something. Good old bonehead there. I'm not sure I like making these blocks even. I think I would have not want, even wanted to make that block before going for the pickup just because you know if you fail a pickup you found score, can you? I mean maybe that's maybe he normally he would have gone down one side, but he thought with the rain, if he fails the sure hands, um he's done for, isn't he? So, you know, it's, there's, a, there's a lot that goes into it. Rando blocks. I think I would get all the scoring threats based up first. And he's just going to go for the... Go for the hit on the ball. Kind of, of the, the thrower. Yeah, thanks to that bonehead. Costly bonehead, but then he chose to activate it. And that's it, you know, you can't say activating it's wrong just because he boneheaded, but there was an element of risk. And not the board game either. So yeah, I guess the other can go in for these two. I think I would have tried that earlier. I know he's got a reroll, but you know, quad skulls happen. Doesn't want to get hit by Mighty Blow. Which is fair enough, so he's leaving the kind of lower odds score on. 
two TZs in the ball. Pretty good. Arzawain can't give up the score here, but he's got to try. Cheeky cards. He is almost giving up the score. Could have done a one dice to only have one tackle zone on the ball. Yep, so he does just give up the score, really. Gives up the score chance. I don't know, I think I would have maybe one dice him and then gone for the four plus dodge, five plus pick up, long bomb, just because if you don't go for it, you've got no chance. It's low odds, but low odds are better than no odds. But you know, that, that's it. Are they really? <laughs> that was his assessment, wasn't it? His, his assessment was go for go for attrition, um, which he got, and then hope for hope to win the game in overtime. I guess he doesn't really have the option of score, scoring early and turning over unless he makes a bunch of cards. So he's basically leaving it in the hands of random, because it is random. Sure, he's got the he's got the. Uh, Arzawain has the initiative with receiving, but it's pretty random who makes the most cards. Um, you know, they've both got a couple of mighty ball. Basically relying on overtime. Scoring on his drive and, and the overtime toss. I think I would have I think I would have gone for the touchdown there as, as stupid as it was, you know, four plus three plus block, four plus dodge, five plus pick up, six plus pass, four plus catch with a reroll. I think it was I think it was better than not trying. But that's just my opinion, man. <laughs> just some guy in the net, doesn't matter. If anyone disagrees, that's absolutely fine. Um, yeah, is what it is, isn't it? I'm not claiming to be the only the only truth in the blood ball or anything. Uh, you know. I'm not the be all and end all of everything. Is he going for a three dice here? See now, I, I don't like this three dice because I think this is quite a big commitment. Maybe it's okay actually. Oh, could have been a double skull if he hadn't. I like the assist even though he doesn't need it because it screens off the, uh, the mighty tackle mighty blow but it does it does leave this guard guy here looking pretty sad and I hate this pick up with a throw a hand off he's done this quite a bit um, yeah, I don't like it I really don't like this obviously it's better to have the ball on a movement 8 dodge player but <laughs> it's also better to not make 75% rolls if you don't have to. And it's also good to have him as a handoff option, you know, so you can still carry on the throw. And then if you if you get the chance to hand off to the catcher, that's better than, Okay, it's not actually because of the rain. But if it wasn't raining, the handoff is the same odds as dodging if he was being based himself. With the added bonus of the failure state isn't so bad. Um, so yeah, I think that's. I'm not a fan of the pick up then handoff. I see quite a few people do that. I mean, not in this World Cup, but in my life playing Blood Bowl. <laughs> Another stun. Three guys off, one guy off, so he's got a two man advantage on the drive. I think the games would be much better to watch in replay form because there's just so much dead time in a real game, you know, to fill in. 
to fill in with nonsense. <laughs> I think the the replays are a much better watch for everybody, really. For me too, you know. I don't want to sit and wait for three minutes while someone, well, the first two and a half minutes are thinking. Um, but you know, absolutely, I I took too long in fact in one of my games. You've got to make the right calls, haven't you? So. So yeah, he got himself in quite a good spot there with the, uh, the drive down here, I think. But it looks like, yeah, because the, og the Ogre spearheading it is pretty good, isn't it? Because he can't deal with him except from his own, but he could have possibly blitzed with the Ogre. Or, like, chain someone away to free the Ogre or something and get his Ogre in with his, because this is a pretty tough thing to deal with, this Ogre being being in the front like this. And I, I think you, you want to stay as central as possible, just gives you more options, if you can. Um, especially on men, so they've got less people to cover everywhere. But I do quite like the, the ogre just getting in, you know, not like, I don't hate that blitz. But I quite like the, uh, the ogre pushing forward like this. Goes for the little bit greedy block there. I would have been happy just having the ogre tied up. I would have been happy with just two players on the ogre tying him up. And this guard over here maybe. Huge bonehead. Now he's got to try to cover this side. Again, might, might have been better to not even activate the ogre there. If he doesn't activate the ogre, then... This blitzer could have maybe blitzed a different place. And he could definitely have covered over here. Now he's left this side weaker. Has to leave this side weaker. To cover against this side of it. Wait, re-roll there? No. I guess the dead body gets in the way enough. I wouldn't hit blitzing this catcher and pushing forward now. He's got the tackle that do it. It's exactly what he does, but he does not find the knockdown. So now does that. Does he put the brakes on a bit? Probably. It's turn 12. He doesn't have to get too far forward too quickly. I think he would have been... The, cat, the throw would have been safer. One square over. Like he could have moved people around to make him safer one square over. But, um, again, better to stay near the middle for more options. Big three plus without a reroll. I mean, block has been value on these, on these ogres. To be fair, although it's not my personal preference, it has paid off a number of times. But then, who knows how, how many times Gand would have paid off? Gets a KO there, even the odds a bit. Guard as well. Did he apple that? No. Oh, it was only it was a serious injury, so he kind of couldn't. Maybe he could have appled that that KO though. 
Um, you know, the chance of somebody getting killed in overtime. I mean, he's got to play for overtime now. In fact, guard guy could have come back on uh, turn 14. Might be crucial. But then he didn't know the other card was going to happen. But still. You know, who knows? He might have taken all 15 seconds to think about it. And I'm never going to criticise somebody for not, not doing that. It is kind of tough that you only get 15 seconds for an apple because that can be an absolute game deciding thing, can't it? Game deciding decision is what I wanted to say. <laughs> Not game deciding thing. So yeah, he's recovered, he's recovered quite well here, Kabusta. I mean, obviously making some removals helped. A stun also helps. So, you know, he's mounted a good defence, but also the dice have helped him, haven't they? So this this is the thing. It's, it's really hard to judge who's played better or anything, you know. Like, most people are going to play well in the, you know, in the World Cup. Um, and, you know, if something different had happened in a lot of the games dice-wise... Maybe you'd be seeing someone else play better, so... But I'm never going to say, you know, someone someone played bad or didn't deserve it, you know, I don't think... I don't think that's very nice. Um, but, you know... Maybe sometimes the pressure's got to some people, but it is what it is. Pretty huge dodge there into the double skulls. See, so you might think that he was unlucky to roll double skulls there, but... <laughs> he makes a KO and he made the dodge without it needing a reroll. So that was overall a very lucky action, wasn't it? Even though it cost him a reroll and he rolled double skulls. But I mean, this game both people have played well anyway, I think. I think both sides have played well this game, for sure. I mean, this has been key, I think, having the ogre far forward because he's been untouchable. Now he can blitz him if he wants. Just stands him up like that. I think that's maybe a mistake. I get, I get that he wants to stop this potential score this side. But, oh, he gets the ogre on the ball. Oh, yeah, this was the turn he could have done things on the ball. Do you know what he could have done? He could have, um, he literally could have blitzed. Ah, oh, I can't rewind it now. I'll pause it. <laughs> the turn 15 thing. Oh, I've missed Exhaust City. See, I missed it being tunnel vision just watching what was happening. The guard could have come in there. This guy could have blitzed the ogre, chained the ball carrier back into the ogre. That that would have been the best play, I think. Um, so, yeah, my rambling there caused me to miss a really good chain push. I think it's a really good chain push to chain the uh, ball carrier at the auger. Um, and as it was, like, sure he's got him in the back, but it's kind of easy to deal with. It's not that good to be basing. If he'd been based with the auger at the front, it would have been pretty good. But, um, yeah, I think that chain would have been nice. Also, knocked over the auger would have been nice. So, yeah, I think that was absolutely the play he should have gone for. But... I think this is incredibly, incredibly greedy here by Arzawain. If you just put this guy to here, it's safe. You know, it's really safe if you put the first catcher there. But instead he makes all these GFI and dodges. And I don't know, I think the first one just makes it so safe that you don't... But you know, this one, it was still pretty safe with, the, with, with him there. I just, I just think... Even if here it would have been safer than where it was, you know. So base, 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 and people.
and this is one of the times where it, there's not a strictly better play. Um, dodging with the ball carrier gives him the best chance to score. Making these attrition, well, that one attrition block, you know. So he, he dodges with a catcher and then blitzes with the uh, thrower. So while, while it makes the score like 2% worse, <laughs> um, 1 or 2% worse, it does mean he's got a much better chance of saving his reroll for overtime. So absolutely, you know, absolutely impossible to say which is the best one. If he fails the... Uh, if he fails the dodge out from the catcher, he would have failed anyway, but if he, you know, so that's one way of looking at it. But then, by the same token, you're adding that 1 in 81 block, aren't you? Which is, is a 1 in 81 chance he does it. And then, so it adds a slight more risk. Yeah, it's not even 1%, it's probably 1%, not 2% less likely, but still. Um, the fact that he gives himself that 1 in 81 to not make extra to not make it. But it does mean he's only 11% to use a reroll instead of 33%. So certainly not going to call him wrong for doing that. Just something obviously he thought about in real life. Decided it was worth the risk. That that tiny percentage chance more of failing was worth the risk of keeping on with his reroll. So... That's fair enough, isn't it? There's a blocks, but it's pointless. It's not pointless. He gets to hit the, uh, he gets to hit the tack mighty blow. So, so rather than Kabusta getting a chance to one turn here, um, which wasn't really a great chance because he was going to have to use the whole method, instead <laughs> he gets his mighty blow tackle cast. Which is pretty unlucky. <laughs> I think anybody in their right mind would agree that's pretty brutal. And now instead of having a man advantage in overtime, he's got the same players. That mighty blow hit that would have been one he would have got to have made. Maybe casting a maybe casting a lineman. So that was almost a two-player swing. And now he's got no chance of scoring in one turn. So, absolutely horrible, horrible look for Kabusta there. Unbelievable. There's kind of an argument for not even, uh, not even blocking with blockless players here, just because you really don't use your reroll on a less blocks and also don't even knocked over, do you? I'm not saying it's a good argument, but some people would say it. Depends how. Utterly risk averse you are. So three D with Maggie Ball. He's not. Goes for the pass for fun. <laughs> Why not? So now for the the biggest the biggest rook dice roll of the game. See who wins the toss. And oh, the wing has the has the possession of the ball. So that's probably going to be all she wrote, isn't it? Both sides have scored on their own drive. Now not only does he just have to score, he, he can score at any point. So. So hard to defend against when people have the luxury of scoring at any point and they know they've won. You know, if, if there was a full half, maybe overtime would be better because scoring early you could get scored back on. But, you know, this... I'll just give somebody a two-turn, even a one-turn chance after the score, oh, no, then it would be a nightmare against Gaming. <laughs> but still, you know... I, have if the person wins the toss they don't score because the, the craziest part is if Arzawain doesn't score here and basically fails his offense then there's still the chance for the kind you know the roll off the penalty kicks still a chance for him to win with that as well and a lot of people have said um, you know if you 
If you win the toss and don't score, you just straight up lose. Or, you know, I think that's a bit... I, I like that rule, but it's also a bit extreme for Blood Bowl, because in Blood Bowl, there's always a chance of, of failure, isn't there? So maybe something like the defending team gets a bonus reroll. And then I think that gives them the, the kind of flexibility. It gives them a plus one if it goes to penalties. And it gives them the flexibility to maybe, you know, try a bit, bit of a better defence. But as it is, obviously, this is a, a huge role winning the, winning the coin toss. Makes the pick up. Again, goes for this handoff action, which I think is a little bit bad. Just my opinion. <laughs> Three dice with mighty ball. Ooh, I, don't, I really don't like the follow there. I think going back to the centre would have been better. One, two, three, four, five. He could have fully gone back to the centre. But he's moved his over away. That's just saying, please attack me down this flank, isn't it? Taking, taking the big guy away. I think that's that was a mistake there. Well, <laughs> oh, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe a mistake's a strong word, but it's not really a trap, is it? He is definitely weaker on the left side. He hasn't, he hasn't done it of trapping. This allows Azawain to get in the scoring range without GFIs. And, you know, maybe he could have done that anyway. But maybe he thought he needed to strengthen that side. So it's really hard after the fact to, you know, say this was wrong or this was right. But yeah, this this, this game made me think, you know. Both played well. Both played really well. Um... You know, very, very high quality blood ball. But, ultimately, it's decided by the luck, isn't it? And, and you know, that's, that's not unusual, is it? At the end of the day, if you've got two teams that are pretty 50-50 and two coaches that are pretty 50-50, the more even the teams and the coaches are, the more luck is going gonna, is gonna to be a factor, isn't it? And, Arzawain gets in for the score there after that failed dodge. Yeah, I mean, nearly every single game in the World Cup, the luckier coaches won. <laughs> you know? Because they're just, there's just not that big a difference in, in coaching, you know? Twice as many AV breaks, and he won the coin toss for overtime. So, you know, it's, it's not to say that people don't deserve their wins at all, you know? Um, but that's just the way the way the, the way it is, isn't it? At the end of the day, pretty much pretty much always the luckier coaches won. Um, I can think of a couple of examples where it's not the case, but you know, overall, it's it's not surprising, is it? At the end of the day, if you get somebody who who plays slightly better than somebody, but the dice are slightly worse, it's it's probably going to go to the guy who got the dice. Um, if someone plays better and gets better dice. They're almost certainly going to win. <laughs> so it's not to say that they wouldn't have won with worse dice, you know. But yeah, well played to both. It was a really, really good game. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.